Welcome to a uh, new session of. Uh, welcome to a new, a new session. We, start, we started the first session of last week of animation, animation figure drawing. So for this class, we basically um, you're supposed to come equipped ideally with a model sheet of your own, or um, or model sheets or a reference of characters and stuff that you want to try learning how to draw. It can be any any kind of character you want, like more cartoony, like maybe like old school Mickey Mouse, or or it can be more like contemporary kind of anime stuff. Uh, I'm choosing this week. I'm going to be I'm going to be studying Vampire Hunter D characters for this. Um, now the uh, the purpose of this class is to kind of like get an opportunity. Like I, I'm doing a lot of fundamentals practice later lately, but uh, to like improve my like my fundamental figure drawing skills. This is the purpose of this class is to kind of help people wrap their brains around how to apply figure drawing techniques into stuff they need for comics or animation or character design or whatever by analyzing and trying to understand a little bit uh, existing character designs. Um, you're not going to master these char the characters that you pick like in a single class session. That's going to take like more practice over time. But if you can absorb a few ideas from it over the over like a session like this and get some good figure drawing observation in, uh, that that would be ideally what you want to shoot for in this class. So what we're going to do for the next 20-25 minutes or so, we're going to take a look at Vampire Hunter D uh, stuff a little bit, and I'm going to talk about some of my observations of the animation style in the show, uh, you know, in the uh, film, and uh, and uh, like. Uh, some of how I'm gonna like, I'm gonna tell you how I'm trying to break down these model sheets myself, and uh, break down the character designs, like so the um, the uh, the the show the uh, the style of the of Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust is driven chiefly by two artists Yoshitaka Amano, who's a uh, character designer illustrator who design who like who did the original book covers for Vampire Hunter D and he also worked on the 1985 film as a character designer. And uh, the uh, director, uh, hang on, I gotta look up his name because I'm having a brain fart for it. Uh, directed by Yoshi, uh, Yoshiaki Kawajiri, who's uh, also known for the uh, Ninja Scroll movie and Wicked City Shinjuku, among other things. Um, he's a very, very classic. Like his his style is very rooted in like the um, this very kind of ornamental um, 80s 90s aesthetic animation that's like very on the eye at the end of like trying to be evocative of like noirish live action um, and so like the characters tend to be very ornate but they also like move in really interesting ways they're, they're, they t the character designs tend to be really detailed um, and uh, the character design proportions, which is a combination of both those two artists, uh, tend to be on the here's here's the 1985 version right there of Vampire Hunter D, and here's the 19 here's the 2000 or whatever when Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust came out uh, version of the char character design. This one's a lot more sleek. This one looks actually kind of closer to um, to Amano's covers in some ways. It is its own thing. Feels like it has more of a sense of like physicality to it, and like uh, it feels like a it feels like a well-crafted vinyl sculpture kind of. The other one, uh, there's a lot of quality like uh, there's a like there's a lot of kind of cheaper production qualities in the original 1985 Vampire Hunter D, but there is a certain there's a certain degree of charm to it that I really enjoy. Um, and so I was almost going to use the original to study from, but the original has a lot of like drawing flaws. In a lot of the frames, it, it it would be worth studying some of the stuff from it. Uh, I, the depictions of gore in it can to be really like raw and and grotesque. And there's a lot of imagination that went into the 1985 one, but uh, in terms of like getting good value out of like some character design and figure study, I think that the I think Bloodlust would be a better thing to go for. So fortunately, there's there's quite a few there's quite a lot of stuff from the Vampire Hunter D, Hunter D Bloodlust art book that's available online. I haven't yoinked all of it, but I've yoinked a good portion of it. Um, and uh, 
so there's plenty to study from. You'll tend to get that with more contemporary um, anime productions. Like they 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 tend to document um, the production work that went into them a lot better because they plan on like selling art book art books and stuff later. And uh, but yeah, the um, there's a lot of really excellent like uh, rough character model sketches and and. Uh, you can find a lot of Genga uh, cleanup animation stuff like that, and rough animation and stuff to refer to some color cells here. Um, and of course, you can just you can just freeze frame the film. Uh, it has a Blu-ray release now that is much that is like much much higher. It has a Blu-ray remaster that was released recently that looks really super crisp. Uh, that I got a rip of. That I'm going to be using later, but like the images are kind of like the images are kind of like in, on the end of this quality in the Blu-ray version. I think that's an actual photograph of a cell, though, because they use a uh, post-process. They use like um, compositing techniques to uh, enhance the vis enhance the visuals of the cells in the film. Um, yeah. I also included this because this was just a, I think this is by Art Germ, but this is um, a really excellent illustration of D. And uh, there's a, draw, uh, there's a sketch, uh, con a convention sketch or whatever by the director. Some model sheet lineups and stuff. I've always loved the werewolf character in this because he's a really creative version. They, they, in the film, how they use him, like um, he's, uh, he uses his intelligence to fight, like he uh, he scopes out some bombs and then pretends to die, pretends to get killed, in order to um, in order to like disarm all the uh, like disarm and disable all the bombs before returning to the fight. And I I like the idea of like he's got like a giant mouth that comes out of the wolf a wolf muzzle that comes out of his stomach, which makes him like a very much a supernatural being, so like a biological being, like a mutant werewolf or something. Um, there he is. Yeah, there's D right there. So about D, um, his character design tends to like favor his legs. He's got like kind of fashion model proportions. So he's got very long legs and uh, what that, and very long legs and very long limbs. So that means that when, when the characters are expressing emotions in close up, the, the, um, the close ups tend to be really, really tight on their heads. Like about as tight as what I've got on screen here. So, and when it's pulled back, you can barely make out their faces a lot of times. And it's more about how their bodies are posed and stuff because their heads are so small. Like, uh, compare that to a lot of Western animation where, like, the character design, they might beef up the size of the head. Like, you can see that, like, in uh, Troll Hunters, for example. The uh, or um, what's that? Uh, there's a new Wizards one that I've been meaning to catch up on. That it's out like a wizard themed spinoff of that series that looks really interesting because I love wizards, I love spellcasters in uh, in RPGs. So that that series might be right up my alley. As you can see, like this like rough character design and stuff. This is kind of like the proportion of, of a show like Troll Hunters or something. The acting you can you can make out more of the face even when you pull the camera back from these kinds of characters, so that um, so that you can read their expressions more. But um, in in a in a in a show like Vampire Hunter D, it's there's a tremendous amount of detail, like ornate detail in the flow and the posture of the body and the story. It's like a kind of a operatic sort of thing. There's a lot of opera in the costuming, opera and stage stage theater in the costuming of the characters. And when they do uh, show their faces, the face, the stuff is, tends to be barely moving, like just the mouth is moving a lot of times. Not always, but like you'll get like really tight close-ups of their faces to read their expressions and stuff because uh, because of the emphasis on the very fashion model proportions of the body. Like, here's a rough kind of observation sketch I did from this model sheet of these proportions a little bit. He, uh, his particular design has kind of like these exaggerated shoulder pads uh, that kind of complement his uh, his torso with his like 
He's got kind of a... He is a character with contrast built into him. He's feminine and masculine. He's stoic, but when he does speak, he speaks very frankly about his feelings. Um, and that's a reflective... Everything about him is reflective of his duality of both being a vampire and a human, and not really belonging in either world. Um, so he's like kind and gentle, but he's also like a vicious, brutal fighter, which is a... Uh, which is a really like he's he's a really interesting character of contrast, basically. But yeah, like uh, the storytelling, of course, is built into his design, um, which is how it should be for really strong characters like this. Uh, but yeah, so um, what I'm going to be uh, using during this session, so I'll be having the model sheets open next to me, and maybe I'll be playing some Sakuguburo stuff. Uh, while uh, while I'm drawing and so on, I'll be trying to integrate integrate elements of the characters, mainly their proportions at first, because I kind of want to wrap my head around the general proportions and posturing that are used, like in um, in the film and the character designs. Um, what I'm hoping to get out of this is I'm not necessarily hoping to kind of master drawing these characters, but I want to like get like a few drops of influence from it into my bloodstream that can I can start integrating into my own work uh, when I create my own characters or I might want to do fan art of Vampire Hunter D at some point I don't know but I'll be like I'll be doing like really really rough characters and stuff I'm not gonna like these characters are super detailed so I'm not gonna concern myself with the detail I'm gonna concern myself with like the underlying kind of stuff going on and I'll show an example of what I mean uh, a good example of that actually comes from a series that was heavily influenced by um, heavily influenced by uh, Vampire Hunter D of course the Castlevania Netflix series which I may actually do some studies of in the future But let's see, There's a, there should be some rough animation somewhere in here to look at. But it shows a little bit, uh, it'll show a little bit more along the lines of kind of what I want to shoot for. If I can find some. Oh, here we go. This is a good example here. These are very, this, this keeps like the general proportions of these character designs and stuff. But it, it keeps them like super rough. Like this is kind of the area that I want to shoot for. Where, um... I'm not too concerned with detail, and I'm more concerned with being able to pose the puppet around. Uh, like, if I want to concern myself with detail, that means I'm working, I'm doing cleanup stuff, and that could be something that I could do later. But um, for today's exercises, uh, it's going to be a lot of quick poses, and I, well, I'm sorry, I don't have it on screen. Very sorry. Here it is. Here's what I wanted to show you. This is this is about how rough I want my stuff to kind of look. You can see maybe a freeze frame here. Like, you can see these are like really loosely worked out. These are very quickly drawn poses, carefully planned out, mind you. That's going to the perspective grid. It's using whatever reference the animators used to um, stage the fight and stage and choreograph the fight. Uh, there's still a good sense of figure drawing. You can still kind of read like the tilt of the shoulders there, the the angle of the pelvis, the placement of the feet and stuff on the ground plane. Um, you can tell you can uh, like you can tell like the hair there. You can see the arm wrapped around the back and stuff. Um, like it's super rough, but the all the information is that you need there to like if you're a cleanup artist or something or doing the next phase of this. There's all the information is there for you to be able to work with this to um, to put the put the characters on model. Like their general proportions and stuff are pretty close in the ballpark right here. Um, we might take a look and see what, what the next step after this phase is. There's like some rougher animation and, oh, here we go. Like this is a lot more tied down than that other stuff. But it's still, it's still a little rough. This is somewhat rough animation, I would say, but like way more tied down. Oh, the top, this is a good comparison right here. Like the top one is kind of, 
even more worked out than I would probably go for right now. But n no, the, like it'd probably look more like the kind of stuff I want to shoot for would be kind of in this vein, up top. But you can see the comparison, like after a cleanup artist gets hold of it, or sometimes the uh, sometimes the uh, animator who did the rough animation handles the cleanup too. But um, but you can see these are like very loosely worked out but all the information is there for you to be able to work with like you can see like the, the, the like check like to, to compare the 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 deltoid shoulder muscle right there to down here for example like uh and like you can even see like uh, the the uh, tilt of the face and stuff there's like little bits and pieces that have been changed and stuff and adjusted like the uh the position of the spear you can def you can definitely see the difference for example, there's the stuff like on the angle of the arm that's been adjusted and so on. But yeah. Yeah, the top one is what I want to shoot for because uh, it's um all the information is there, uh, just really loose and loose and free, but still in the ballpark of the character proportions. Um. So uh, what we're gonna do. Uh, when we get started here is I'm gonna have like my reference stuff open nearby I might actually have the Sakuku Buru stuff playing next to me over here or something uh, and I'm going to have like a, a bunch of model sheet things and we're going to be using a bunch of um, let's see I have a bunch of athlete poses that I gathered the other day that we might use like these these ones here there's also a bunch of parkour poses that I've gathered previously and a bunch of other things. Uh, these are some pretty good poses. I think there's some sword poses in here too. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to work through these. We're going to jump around between the different folders I have to do quick a character quick sketches using the poses and trying to get like something kind of like our care, our rough character, um, our rough character in on that basically. Like I said, you can use any character you want for this. You can use your own OCs. You can use the Vampire Hunter D stuff I'm using. You could even using, use the modern Castlevania stuff if you have that handy. Um, just pick something that you really kind of pick a character that you really want to um, try learning something from. Uh, or if you have an existing character design that you want to uh, like test drive in different poses. Uh, this would be a good uh, opportunity to do that. But uh, we're going to be starting that in about five minutes. Okay, Google, set timer five minutes. Okay, Google, set timer five minutes. Five minutes, and that's starting now. All right, I'm going to make sure that my reference file with all my Vampire Hunter D stuff is up here uh, on my screen. Uh, in the future, I'd want to get a couple more monitors to my setup because that would make holding up reference while I'm running a class a lot easier. Holding up reference for myself uh, near me a lot easier when I'm running a class. I could probably get like some cheap, like seventy-five, one hundred dollar monitor or two for that. Preferably something with a good stand that can let me tilt it vertically if I need it, if I need to. Yeah. So I'm taking a look. I'm, you can't see on my screen, but I'm taking. A, I'm putting on like um, some Vampire Hunter D art. It's going to help me with uh, tonight's drawing lessons or tonight's drawing practices. Uh, the main one being uh, here. Let me let me show this. This this there's one sheet in particular that uh, is going to be pretty useful for me, and uh, that's this one here. Like that sheet in particular. Um, also the, the lineup sheet. Well, these ones right here for close-ups and some body stuff. And this li these lineup sheets can be really helpful. This is a good still frame that I might be uh, popping in and out. I, when you have your reference, you should be shifting between things periodically to kind of refresh your eye. And I'm, I'll pro I will probably be I will probably be doing a mix of invented poses and quick studies of the character models in addition to 
uh, drawing the figures that we're going to be showing on screen. Yeah, I wanted to actually do, I was thinking about doing Space Dandy this weekend, but I was already like keen on doing Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust. I might save Space Dandy for next weekend. But Space Dandy would be really fun to practice from for sure. So, uh, we'll give it a few minutes. I'm going to hit the restroom. Uh, now would be the time to hit the restroom. Get, get ready to draw and uh, maybe start scribbling and warming up your hand and getting some line drills in and so on. Um, I'll let that loop back there. I'd love to have like a, I'd love to let, yeah, maybe get like, I've got a budget for about like two or three more monitors to play with for, to figure out what would be a good multi-monitor setup for setting up reference and multitasking in the classes I've run. I currently have a TV monitor, which would be taken out of commission if I get a if I get a regular display. I have a TV monitor, I, a um, a cheap gaming display, uh, cheap 140 hertz 4 hertz gaming display that I can tilt vertically, and a uh, 22 HD Cintiq. That is my main drawing space, which is flipped vertically right now because uh, I'm finding that. Portrait mode gives me more space to uh, show stuff in, in higher detail in class, and um, um, and it also gives me um, uh, it also gives me a, an experience that feels like a lot like uh, sitting at a large drawing pad. It also helps when I'm drawing like really long, like when, if I'm drawing like tall characters, like from anime or something like that, like tall figures or figurative characters or whatever. Um, Flipping the display vertically helps me like get in, get like enough real estate, um, get enough real estate to like uh, draw through the whole figure instead of chopping it up into pieces with a 1080p display horizontally uh, flipped horizontally. Okay, Google, how much time left on timer? You've got 40 seconds remaining. Okay, Google, we will add one minute, one minute to timer. Second timer, one millimeter okay. for one minute. Okay, Google, cancel start. timer. Okay, Google, set timer for two minutes. Since I don't know which one you meant, I won't make any changes. Okay, Google. I'm really so Okay, Google, cancel all timers. All right, I canceled both of them. Okay, Google, set timer for two minutes. Two minutes. And we're starting now. So I'm setting it for two minutes, so I can hit the restroom real quick, and then uh, we're going to get started.
All right, we're getting it started. I'm going to queue up the gesture drawing and get it on screen. All right, got to put, pull my reference over here. I'm going to maybe adjust this a bit so you can have a little taste of the Sakura Burrow stuff on screen, just for fun. Just a little inspirational material on the left there. So uh, I'm going to start the timer. We're going to warm up with some um, threes. OK, Google, set timer for. Oh, uh, another thing I wanted to mention. Um, there's a class that's happening immediately after mine at 9, at like I think 9 PM. Uh, I would recommend um, I think you want to set a timer. Is that right? OK, Google, no. OK, Google, set timer for 26 minutes. 26 minutes, starting now. So um, there's a class happening immediately after mine. I have to double check what the subject was. But the subject, if I recall, seemed like something very interesting that I would want to study. Let's see. Oh, i got to have my reference open. That's very important. Move that on screen where I can see it. Now, why did Google do that? I don't understand. So I'm going to be trying to using some of the generic proportions of characters on this show a little bit, or characters on this film. I, I will often say, accidentally say show, interchange show and film. That's just a f silly habit. Um, but I'll, I, um, I'm going to try to like kind of play with the I'm per like we're doing warm-ups right now. These are three-minute warm-ups, so um, you can try putting the care like putting the characters on them, but really just get your hand warmed up. Just because you're doing a character doesn't mean you should neglect your figure drawing fundamentals or whatever. Um, so anything that you've been practicing recently in figure drawing you should be trying to apply uh, when you're doing these today. What you can also do is, uh, if you want to like play with distorting the proportions a little bit, like I'm kind of doing, or you want to try getting some of the traits of the character designs on the figure, you can lower opacity on it. And then take another line and uh, do something along these lines that I'm kind of messing with right now. So that rough animation, that's by someone who understands the human figure very well. Um, and I have no doubt that they actually worked out what we see, what we see in that rough animation that's playing on screen right now. Um, a lot rougher than even what we're seeing there, uh, at least initially. But what we what we are seeing there is kind of what I want to shoot for a little bit in um, um, in my like my quick figure drawing. I want something that's kind of like 
in the ballpark of the character's proportion of the character's proportions, and uh, with like impressions of some of the anatomy and structure kind of worked out a little bit. But for this first round, uh, we're going to be warming up. And uh, we may actually do a bonus round for the last half hour to round out everything we do to about three hours. Um, that also means that the, that the like immediately when I finish, uh, it's going to go straight into the next guy's class. So he'll probably come in here and banter with us or something before, like when we're kind of wrapping up. But I'm going to make sure I, I actually want to attend his class. I'll be I'll continue drawing actually during his class too. Except it won't be me doing any kind of lecture and that would be my shut up time. If he's not streaming to Twitch, I might stream it to Twitch though. But we'll see. Uh, if he's just streaming it to Twitch, then I'll shut down mine and uh, and uh, and like like have everyone in my Twitch raid his uh, raid his Twitch. I don't know if he has one or not. But the person who's going to be teaching is someone who's really good from the Discord, and I'm having tremendous. I'm having like the worst case of brain fart gas right now with people's names at the moment. So. Uh, all I remember is that it was really awesome, and it was some, it was a subject that I was that I think would be great to practice immediately, and practice and see, and do critique feed, feedback on immediately after getting good and warmed up from doing this. I'm going to try to include, include the ground plane whenever I can on these for sure. Uh, so it looks like attendance is down today and that's understandable because I, I just changed the time of this class to 5.30. So I really need like more time to prepare for the classes during the day and putting it on... Originally 2.30 2 was supposed to make it easy on, easier on me for the Saturday classes, but um, my circadian cycle is kind of shit right now, and I. But but it's it's shit. But like I, I having classes at five thirty gives me enough breathing room for if I wake up really late later in in the morning, I have plenty of time to prep for the class. So right now I'm kind of get getting keyed into my fundamental my three drawing fundamentals because like I'm confident that. If I get good and warmed up on those, um, I can just distort them to fit the uh, the character proportions. I'll be playing with that as I get more warmed up. Like I might favor the the size of the legs as a starter, for example. And I'll just try to inject like little bits of some of the traits of the character design. The traits and like common um, common denominator things of the character designs from the production that I'm sort of observing into these figures that I'm doing. Remember when you're trying to learn a character design, don't do don't not concern yourself with the detail. Like in the case of Vampire Hunter D characters, those characters have a tremendous amount of detail. Um, uh, you can get lost in the de that detail. Uh, so look for the big shapes, because in actuality, those characters are very really hi very highly dependent on their and their body shapes and their silhouette, in spite of having all that ornate ornate detail. And if you really look at them, there's like uh, there's parts of them that are more detailed and less detailed too. And uh, D has a really clever 
thing built into his character design where he has a lot of complexity but it's under his cloak so there's a lot of times when like you when you see what's uh, when you see him being animated and his cloak is covering up um, most of his body like in that even in that like action scenes and stuff but you still get a sense of what's under that cloak uh, in terms of like how his body's moving or behaving or whatever. I drew that guy a little big for this, but he came out pretty nice for being a three minute warm up drawing. How much time do I have? Four seconds. It's a little lame pose. I think I'm gonna. Eh, we'll keep that one. I was gonna skip it because it's kind of a boring. Crappy martial art caught up a stock photo pose. I might take that image out of my rotation though, because it's it's a stock image with the stock image stuff on it, and it's just a really boring pose. Not that you couldn't push it or something. I might actually do that. Like this is an opportunity for me to take lemons and make lemonade. So I'll make, I'm making a torso that's kind of like D's upper body a little bit. Maybe I'll favor the lower, I'm going to remember to favor the lower body. So I'm going to maybe like add an extra head height to the legs, to where the legs end, something like this. Yeah. I'm going to try to co coordinate with the other guy who's teaching the class immediately after this about how his um, class gets archived. Like, I don't know if he's using any kind of archiving, but I would recommend extending his class up immediately after mine. Even if you're like too kind of semi exhausted to draw. Um, assuming you're in a time zone that isn't crazy and that you're not staying up super late, because Good lord, get some sleep. Uh, you need that if you're gonna. You need that a lot as part of the learning process. You need to get plenty of sleep every night in order to absorb information and improve. But so that leg is kind of leaning towards us a little bit. Bottom of the foot we got here. That back arm is really lame. Maybe I should try tucking it in a little bit more. Posture is looking a little lame too. I don't think I pushed the pose as much as I should have, I could have, but But that's okay. I'm just starting. To, I'm just getting warmed up. So this is me, just like my earliest attempt at playing with a character model. That's something kind of like what the D proportions are. I'm still drawing way too big for the page. Let's make a new page real quick. See if I can do better on this one. With in terms of like size on the page. Some of these are poses. Here's a secret here, though. Some of these are poses that I've done, drawn previously in the last few days, so I'm kind of familiar with how they work a little bit. So that actually gives me good. Um, I'm not going into these poses completely blind. Uh, I kind of know a little bit of how they work from trying to draw them previously. So then I can distort them a bit for when I want to push things in the direction of being. 
uh, more like the v, the uh, vampire hunter D body proportions. This guy though, I'm not too comfortable with handling for shortening right now, so I'm just going to use a tornado kind of on his legs back there. Let's see what I can do here. Might not go too far with this guy, actually. But let's see. I was going to distort this guy into a D character and make the head smaller. I'd emphasize the torso a little bit more, the upper torso a little bit more. Really, to kind of maybe push his hip, hip bones a bit, something like that. Hip bones and pelvis. Um, maybe like really shrink his foot back there or something. Get a little box to place the feet in. I'm just playing right here. I'm not trying to get a good drawing. I'm playing with tackling drawing problems a little bit. As this is a this is a tough pose to kind of deal with due to all the foreshortening and uh, and distortion that's happening. But I could see potentially if I had more time to kind of mess with that, I could turn that character into like a spellcaster or something with that sand that he's throwing up or something. That'd be a good reference for something like that. I'd say 34 viewers is a pretty good turnout considering I had a schedule change. So thank you all for coming. I hope you're able to stay for the full three hours and you'll get an even more of an art. Um, well, if you want to rest for the class, but I would recommend attending the class that's immediately after mine at 9 p.m. if you're able to. Uh, even if you aren't necessarily drawing, like you've done your drawing quota for the day after doing what you're doing here with me. Um, I would recommend attending to learn some stuff. Uh, I have to look up after the break, but I remember it was like a really good subject matter what's being uh, what's being taught in his class. So first off, I know I'm gonna have to make the head a lot smaller. I'm gonna keep things pretty simple. I think that upper leg right there is roughly exaggerated enough. Class be recorded. Um, I probably uh, we will find. I will make sure that it's recorded some some fashion, um, even if he doesn't have it set up for it. Whether it's him doing the recording or me. I'm still kind of getting warmed up here. Using like getting warmed up with using the tools that I'm going to be using to break down the figure for the rest of tonight. Okay, Google, how much time left on timer? Seven minutes and fifty-four seconds remaining. Cool.
He's a kind of a non-specific character that uses the rules of proportion that the D cast has. It's easy to see, that's why the lineup sheets are helpful, because it's easy to see the common denominators between the character proportions. Notice that some characters in D have really dainty feet, and then there's a few that have really big feet. Uh, the werewolf character, definitely. Even in this human form, he has particularly large feet. So I'm going to maybe look more at him right now for this pose. The human form werewolf. So also, he's on particular also has really lank, long, lanky arms. Because his arms are weapons. Off, uh, he doesn't he doesn't fight with weapons. He uses his he uses his werewolf claws and his fangs. The character designs are very much like dolls, like dolls are like Bunraku puppets, it's kind of betraying their Asian influence of puppet theater that tells like some really, uh, a lot of Asian puppet theater in Japan in particular that tells like really Mature stories using um, uh, using like uh, puppet characters and stuff. <laughs> yeah, this guy. I mean, this is a, this is a good time to play with body proportion for sure. I can maybe use the um, his the werewolf form of the werewolf character on this guy. Hips kind of in there. So what I'm doing is I have a bunch of the model sheet stuff up next to me uh, on the same screen actually as the gesture drawing app, which is being streamed to the uh, um, which is being streamed to Twitch on screen, but you can't see the Vampire Hunter D reference files that I also have open. Like I said, in the future I want to get some other monitors. I get some other I'm gonna get some other cheap monitors that I can put up multi-monitor reference images on and cycle through them as I want as I need. The other thing I can do is I can print up stuff well, now I, I just got some more ink cartridges for my printer so I can print up more stuff and paste them on the walls around me and make image boards, real life image boards that I um, add stuff to. So I think this guy's calves are maybe shorter because he's got like werewolf legs. He's got big shoulders. How much more time we got? One minute. That's good enough. Good enough time to get some more of this guy in. Get the tilt of the
I'll just use like a very simple parallel line sweeping across the body to kind of get the gesture of those arms in. And then I get to play with it according to what the model sheet says. The heads look a little stubby, so. so I'm gonna stick with this pose. You can you can move to the next one, but I want to see if I can get this one looking a little bit more plausible. have a neck in there you can do this too like if you want to kind of work out some of the stuff more in the pose you can stick with the pose and not do the next one kind of like what I'm doing Get a little extra time in there okay Google how much time left on timer T minus 49 seconds cool I guess this one will be the last pose technically we should probably be on break right now it's been 26 minutes, wasn't it? Okay, Google, how much time left on timer? There's 15 seconds left. Okay, Google, Google add five minutes to timer. Done. Five minutes added to your 26 minute timer. You've got five minutes and eight seconds left. So we got a. F we're on break basically right now. You can keep drawing this pose if you like. I'm going to pause it here actually. We'll probably do another round of threes, but then I'm going to probably slow it down to fives after that. We'll see if we can get some sevens in too, where you really pay attention to the model sheet and try to um, get something a lot closer to the characters, at least proportion wise, and overall kind of feel. Like we're not going for like model accuracy, we're going for, we wanna have, ideally have the characters volumes and proportions kind of in the, ball, in the ballpark for uh, this session. If, any, if there's anything you take away from it. Sorry, I'm messing with some of the basic shapes that I'm going to be using to construct the figures. There's some short anatomical shorthand that went into the animation that you're seeing on the Castlevania roughs. That's the kind of stuff that I want to get more intuitive with my um, figure drawing in the future. I want to get it more intuitive, but obviously you should also you should um, gather like oodles of reference of the body and different and. Um, of the body in different proportions and uh, different um, poses so that when you run into drawing problems you have some you have something to fall back on um, because of, because I'm familiarizing myself with like these care with these poses that I found from the from the net I kind of have a visual library in my head of some of these that I've done before and I've done before more than once and um, I also have a library index in my head, remembering what kinds of poses 
we're, uh, we're in these sessions that we've been doing. So that, like, say if I have an animation or a pose for an illustration or a character or whatever, um, I have a physical library of pose reference and uh, that I can uh, pull from for solving stuff in the future. Right now I'm concentrating on like art fundamentals and stuff like this, but in the f near future I'm going to be moving into doing animation and um, animation and character stuff. And I'm doing these to, to like improve my drawing and my intuitive drawing abilities. Uh, that are going to be funneled into into animation and uh, character stuff. I think I actually beefed up the arms enough on that guy. Like his arms are even longer and lankier than than I got. His deltoid is massive. Like if his arm was hanging down here, it'd be like. His hand comes down to his about his knee. His head is probably smaller too, like something like that. Going by the model sheet. Okay, Google, stop. Okay, Google, set timer for 25 minutes. We're going to do another set of threes. So let's change your pose. Okay, okay Google. Okay, Google, how much time left on timer? There's 25 minutes to go. Cool. All right, new set. So next Monday we're going to be doing Riley Method heads, and we're going to be slowing down, kind of like what we're doing here, to, uh, what we did yesterday in figure drawing class, to do a couple 25-minute Riley Method, uh, do some Riley Method 25-minute head, heads. Really slow down and pay attention to. The forms of Riley of the Riley method head. So for this pose, I've decided I'm just going to try to like construct the pose out of mostly shapes, because I want to use some more. I want to use some more of these for the character models, like cleaner shapes. Cleaner shapes with volume to them and the gesture built into them. I keep forgetting that I, I mean been meaning to order some art nibs for my Centipede pencil. This one's kind of getting pretty badly worn down. 
It's probably one of the reasons why my lines are so sketchy too, compared to usual. Although I do have that problem in general. That is a really massive figure for the page. I should be shrinking that. That's a little more like it. Kind of emphasized her legs, unintentionally, mind you. But I'm just going to lean into that a little bit more to make it more like the Vampire Hunter D character proportions, I think. Let's do an invented foot down here that's sort of based on the shoes shapes of the model sheets a bit. That pose is looking a little stiff, I think, what I just did. Let's see what I can do about this one. Side plane. So I'm going to try exaggerating the pose a little bit. Push the neck out. Like the D cast has really, a lot of them have really long necks. Like you can really see the neck muscles, especially on the male characters. But you can mainly see like, the, you can see like the collarbone and the neck muscles on all the characters usually. And some of the neck muscles on all the characters usually. And I do notice that a kind of a common denominator, denominator is even like, almost every character has that kind of shoulder pad thing going on, like that. The werewolf guy even kind of has a little bit of it going on in, in just in the muscle of his deltoids, even though he doesn't have any kind of padding on his arms. There we go. That's actually in the ballpark a little bit of a Vampire Hunter D female character. Um, female character figure, um, torso shape a little bit. Let's zoom back and make sure I get the proportions of the figure to their to the right distortion and the right emphasis on the legs being longer than the upper half of the body. The female characters tend to have smaller the female cast members tend to have much smaller feet. I'm not going to worry about working them out too much because I don't got only got about 10 seconds. I maybe should have stuck with the torso on that one, but this one I can probably play a little bit more with the feminine proportions of characters in this in this movie. Thinking of putting on some Shin Megami Tensei music. I'm pretty sure that won't get me a copyright strike to play. It'd be fucking annoying if it did. Hmm. I don't know if I want to risk it. Like I'm not worried about Twitch, because Twitch wouldn't censor something like they wouldn't censor audio from a game. But like um, using audio from 
some of the Shin Megami Tensei games might get me like a a copyright mark on YouTube when I upload later from like at from like Atlas USA or something. I'll try it anyway. I'll just like um, I kind of need a morale boost music back here. So let's see. I'm really looking forward to Shin Megami Tensei 5. I'm hoping that that game turns out to be a mega hit for the Switch. So the franchise deserves it. I didn't get to really dig into that figure the way I wanted to, but oh well. Let's move on. Oh good, I can do a lot with this guy. And he is one of the side hero characters who has really exposed mech muscles. For my proportionate guide. Who here has not seen Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust? <laughs> yeah, definitely see it. It's a really good film. Vampire Hunter D, for those who don't know, is a it's a mixture of gothic horror, sci-fi, and western, uh, a post-apocalypse sci-fi and western, and also a love story, and uh, and fantasy. It's a lovely genre mix. Uh, the original 1985 movie is also worth watching too. It has its own like kind of manic charm to it. There's a lot of jankiness in it, but in the uh, production quality, but it's the the charm and the grotesqueness and the creativity and the sense of world building and stuff comes through. Like it's really it's really good and fun to watch. It's one of those 80s anime gen anime gems for sure. 1980, the 1985 movie. I think Bloodlust was like 2000. But Bloodlust holds up today really, really well, even by today's standards. It has remarkably good animation in it too. I don't think the pose is quite pose is a little awkward, but the proportions are kind of there, that they just did. Mm 
maybe we try to come in a little stronger. So I know I can think of another cast member that I, I would probably use for this guy. Let's see if I can pull up the model sheet of him right now. But he's the uh, the Marcus brother who uses. Uh, I can, I, you can actually use D for this one, but because uh, of this huge sword. But um, I'm thinking of the Marcus brother for like the Marcus brother who um, one of the vampire hunters who uh, fights with these kind of um, boomerang blades. Vampire Hunter D is pretty wild. I, I'm, I'm not kidding when I say it mixes sci-fi with gothic horror fantasy. Like, uh, D has a cybernetic horse. Um, there's uh, there's cyber there's people with cybernetic modifications in the world. Uh, a lot of vampires use use technology and space travel. Um, a lot of vampires have actually left at the point in the story that the film takes place. A lot of the vampires have actually left the planet. To like a colony in the stars. Um, presumably, a lot of them are just going to stay are stay in a stasis sleep so that they don't have to worry about their hunger or something. But Yeah, the series deals with like uh, a lot of things, like duality, abu uh, abuse, uh, prejudice. Um, holding on to someone, uh, your sense of humanity, and so on. It's a really great um, novel series, um, from what little I've skimmed of it, but uh, the films give a good taste of the themes of the novels. I really should pick up and read them someday, though. It's a very wild pose, isn't it? Give it a shot, though. I mean, you can kind of look at what I'm going to try to do with it for some cues. Start with that head. Like when you get a complicated pose like this, go simple. Like I know the top of the shoulder should be like kind of a box, a top of a box like that. Then I can do like a little circle here for the deltoid. Drop a couple parallel lines here for the arm. So I'm seeing a little bit of the back. So make this kind of, you know, not that. I'm gonna make this kind of like egg shape here for the course a little bit. Like when you get poses like this you kind of have to kind of have to play with design a little bit. So I'm trying to get a side plane of the box of the pelvis but I don't think there's going to be enough time for me to work that out too well so I'm going to kind of power through the other stuff to get the other stuff working. And actually the box should be up here. It's closer to the head. One detail I did appreciate in like the original Vampire Hunter D. Um, so D's big, uh, D's big thing is like his name is D because it's a reference to his ancestor. He's descended from uh, Dracula. He's like a uh, Dracula in the in the world of Vampire Hunter D is kind of almost like a deif. He's a, a deified lord, a lord of legend in um, Vampire Lord of Legend in uh, um, the backstory of the vampires of the world. 
Vampire hunter uh, D, D is a half vampire, half human offspring, uh, fathered by Dracula. And he uses his powers to to fight evil vampires and uh, as a bounty hunter. He's a little bit of a morally ambiguous character too, because like his motivations aren't always completely pure, but he is generally a, someone with a good heart. He's like always constantly fighting against his uh, his bestial vampire bloodlusty nature. But his bloodlusty nature has also saved his ass several times. Or, yeah. Or he gets like um, severely injured or captured or something like that, and uh, and uh, then they, like loses control and uh, of his vampire side, and goes into like beast rage mode basically. As a contrast to his personality, there's a little, there's like kind of a mutant parasitic creature that's attached to his body, his body, who uh, takes up the place of his left hand. He's just called Left Hand, and uh, he kind of has, he's like the voice of an old man, and he appears as like a tumor-like, tumor-like face on his palm, and the hand has the power to like, um, consume elemental forces like earth earth, fire, wind, and water, and stuff, and then expel them in the form of, like, like, magical energy blasts and stuff, or use them, to use, like, when he, when D gets wounded, he's able to, like, consume earth and air energy to heal, to heal, heal D's body. Let's see. Got another minute on this. So I'm starting to develop a, a loose sense of the general proportions of the D cast, so I'm injecting that in small doses into these poses that I'm doing now. And I push this pose a little bit just to see what happened with the Pushing the torso to the right a bit. I could even do something like make the um, item she's holding there like a weapon or something. If I wanted to play with stuff like that for this. skip this dude. I don't like this pose. I'll do a pick a pose thing. That one's a good one. Yeah, compared to last week when I was doing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle stuff, this is uh, this is a step up in terms of like me getting stuff that's like a plausible figure on the page, I would say. Like all that relentless practice I'm doing is definitely paying off for making the figure more intuitive. I've been getting in, uh, except Tuesday last week when I was having heat, heat exhaustion, I've been getting three hours of, pra of practice like this in through classes or through workshops every day. So we're going to be doing uh, another three hour figure workshop tomorrow, which will also 
probably include some head drawing stuff where I'll have opportunity to practice some of the some of the um, uh, Riley method heads that I'm going to be uh, teaching on Monday. Like I'm finding it really, really helps if I like uh, the day, the night before, like try to run a workshop that's kind of like touching in the touching like on something that's in the vein of what I'm going to be teaching the next day. So I don't see too much opportunity right now for me to hook into something to push to the D proportions, at least initially. So this is pretty, this is closer to what's um, actually happening with the pose there. But I'm going to see if I can do anything to push this a bit more and to be more like a D character. So maybe I can start, actually, wait, that thigh is really long, but not on purpose. Let's kind of mold it a little bit more. This would be like a D character. Pose on that page. Oh, it's, it's, uh, it's pausing time. But we might use this page for the next set. Um, oh, yeah, the next set is going to be probably fives. But we'll see. Um, okay, Google, stop. Okay, Google, set timer five minutes. Yeah. I'm getting, like, compare, if you compare, like, these to my last week's work. This is a big step up um, in terms of like utilizing the, fig the figure on the fly the way that I am right now. Yeah, this is definitely a step up from last week. That regular practice is paying off for me for sure. I'm getting way more intuitive with like using um, constructed shapes that have like the gesture built into them, like those cubes there, for example, that are kind of bent and feel a little bit, uh, they're kind of like curved and feel more pliable and stuff. And eventually that's going to extend through the whole body. The more of this I do, the more sure of it that I get. But the goal is, is what you're seeing on screen with that rough animation right here, this kind of stuff. Quick kind of head 
a head and neck and shoulders thing real quick. I don't know if I'll probably do like head, heads, head drawings of this. It seems like important to maybe do some of that for these characters if I really want to learn from them. But I would probably won't do that this session. I may sneak those in tomorrow though. Or just do them on my own later. But like the generic, um, let me, let me bring up some reference here for myself. The generic Vampire Hunter D heads, really thin noses, emphasis on the neck and being able to see like this little collarbone area. Uh, the male characters you often see more of the neck muscles, uh, female characters less, less so. There's a big emphasis on the top of the head a little bit. The eyes look like they almost kind of may rest below an eye, a potential eye line. Characters often have sideburns of some kind. This character that I'm doing is kind of a generic androgynous character. There's, a, there's some male characters that have um, very feminine features in this. Let's see here, there's... A lot of characters that have kind of like this... like, eye, like up tilt of the eye sort of thing going on. Makes them look a little, little, little bit crazed. Really thin chins. One character I'm looking at has like kind of emphasized cheekbones. But you can use the Loomis head. Remember those Loomis heads that I've been relentlessly t teaching you guys how to use. You can use those here on these on like these kinds of characters. Even if like the creators of the show weren't using Loomis heads, they used something as for an animate uh, Japanese animator rough in or something to get the features and uh, everything placed. And you can use the Loomis head as a uh, construction device for characters like these too. Like that's how flexible that thing is. Some very elegant line work, even in some of the roughs that I'm looking at for Vampire Hunter D. So this one I'm not strictly following a model sheet, but I am looking at a model sheet that has a head at this angle of it. Something and like this is like a, a kind of not me not really committing to the model sheet, but kind of playing with some of the generic things on it. Some of this kind of reminds me of German Expressionist painter Egon Schiele, whose work I might want to show on screen a little later, because he's been a big influence on a lot of anime, actually. These really gangly figures that he draws.
So it is cartoon, but it's like a very different kind of cartoony when you think of the word cartoon. It's cartooning for telling very mature fantasy stories. With like hyper adult characters kind of almost like the adult trait adult traits are emphasized in really exaggerated uh, angular ways so they're kind of a mix of like Bunraku puppet dolls and like fine art abstract uh, sculptures and fashion model illustrations Kind of all working together with, with themselves. Okay, Google, how much time left on timer? It looks like you don't have any timers set at the moment. Oof, I thought I did. Well, uh, we'll we'll get started right away. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it on fives now. We might want to switch to a different folder. I think that one contains some figures that we've that I've done previously throughout this week, but here I know that there are really good poses in here, so especially for what we're doing here. Okay, Google set timer for 25 minutes. Sure, 25 minutes. Starting now. I'm going to try doing something along the lines of what I'm seeing in those animations. Those rough animation cells that are on screen, which I'm going to try to use interlocking shapes that sort of follow the gesture and that use kind of simplified anatomy to build the figures with. As long as they follow the gesture, I should be good. Size that neck a little bit more like the Vampire Hunter D models. So you're gonna do with that face here. It's 
knock that back. Oh. oh, it's on three minutes. It's supposed to be on five. We'll go back to that guy. What? It's on fives. What? Is it? Okay. We'll go back to that guy. There he is. So we got another two minutes on this dude. Then I'll skip to the next one. Kind of exaggerating the neck and shrinking the head a bit. I'm really trying to feel out the pose a little bit more on these. Take the lower opacity on it. Oh, it's time to skip to the next one actually. That one's a really good one that I've drawn before a few times this week. That would be good to apply the Vampire Hunter D character proportions to. Shrink that a bit, that's a little bit large. But like you, this is like a very clear figure. You can practically like make out the doll parts of this body if it were turned into a doll. All you need to do, do all you need to do really is to kind of like use what's already there if you're gonna use characters like mine and just distort the um, distort the proportions a bit. Emphasize things like the shoulders, those angular vampire hunter D shoulders.
Like, there's a certain degree of elegance in the Vampire Hunter D designs and poses that I kind of want to pull from for this. I'm hoping to get take away a few drops of elegance in my uh, drawing on these designs. People who are coming in here are going to be a little confused. Why do you have Castlevania stuff up if you're doing Camp Vampire and RD? Well, <laughs> I mean, they kind of, kind of combine them a little bit of each, a little, even though I'm really constant. Uh, what I have physically open near me that you can't see is a bunch of Vampire Hunter D model sheets and uh, pose reference that I'm studying. And on, on screen to the left is kind of what I'm, you know, like a kind of an example of the roughing in of character proportions that I kind of want to shoot for a little bit more. I'd like to find way more poses like this that are just like a really clear figure uh, that I can use for reference, but this is an excellent one just in general. So look at look at the f like fun result I got out of using that one on page. That is somewhat in the ballpark of a Vampire Hunter D character proportion uh, rough. Could be better drawn, <laughs> way better drawn, if I had more practice, and just in general. But that's why I'm doing this, so I can get better. The music is kind of scary. Well, it should be. It's from a game where you fight gods and demons. Anyone who wants a good taste of the Shin Megami Tensei franchise, I would recommend when uh, the HD re-release of Nocturne is out, pick that up. A word of warning though, it's an extremely difficult game. Like, I'm talking like uh, Dark Souls tier difficulty of turn-based RPGs. But it's one of the best RP uh, JRPGs ever made. It's a cult favorite for a lot of... For a, a lot of damn good reasons. For everything from the atmosphere to the story to the gameplay. And the music. I actually put on some of the music from it a little bit. Here. Let me first get a better pose for our five. That's a good one. I'm going to put on music from Shin Megami Tensei. Um, let's see. From Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne. This is some of the battle music. And the plot of that game is the world has ended, there's nothing to save. And you have been turned into, and you have, in order to survive in the new world, you've been turned against your will into a half demon, half human. And you recruit other demons to, um, uh, to traverse the hostile world that you're now in. So there's this underlying theme that you, like, you've already been forsaken by God, or whatever, for the game, which is really cool. It's a really nihilistic uh, game in its atmosphere and tone, but in a really, really kind of very arty, pleasing way, in terms of being like a really evocative and beautiful game with interesting story.
and it sadly was like it became a cult. It became a cult hit when it was out, but it didn't get the recognition it really deserved. The protagonist in Nocturne was in the Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne, by the way, was actually uh, inspired by the Red Hot Chili Peppers music video where they're all shirtless. I think it's the Give It Away Now music video. Like the um, the game creators like saw the music video and was like inspired to like make a, protag a protagonist who's shirt who's like shirtless and battles like um, because he's a demon, he doesn't really need armor or anything like that, so... Like the idea of like the, uh... It's being like a raw and kind of primal, um... Character with, with supernatural powers, basically. That's cool though, the tattoos that they give, they give you when you, when you turn into a demon look like kind of like Tron stuff, the Tron designs of neon glowing patterns on your body. Alright, let's see if I can insert some Vampire Hunter D proportional distortions in this in the time I have left. Head smaller. The male character, a lot of the male characters have very hourglass, curvy figures in Vampire Hunter D. Not the masculine ones, there's like some very masculine characters in it that don't. Um, but there's a lot of male characters that have very like like feminine curves to their bodies in the film. Yeah, the nihilistic atmosphere of Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne, I think, is the best atmosphere of any game in the series. Like, it's it's the most Shin Megami Tensei in what I think of when I think of Shin Megami Tensei in terms of atmosphere of any of the games in the franchise. a drafting table. Um, I recommend you uh, draw at something where you have, where you're able to maintain good posture and where you're able to get full, full control of your drawing, full range of motion with your drawing arm. Uh, so if you have, if you get a good drafting table and a good chair to sit at that drafting table, that would definitely help. Sort of drawing a little bit too large and zoomed in than I should be right now. I need to draw zoom back at a size where I can see the whole figure. Mm -hmm. 
So there's a pal of mine who does a give me ten dollars and I'll draw you anything for ten minutes or something. Ten minutes or an hour or whatever. I think it was ten minutes for him. But um, I'm thinking of doing something like that in the future. Don't know if I'll charge as much as he does, but um, for ten minutes I'm your art slave as long as I'm not doing anything that's too inappropriate or not safe for work or whatever. Alright, got this guy. I'll go back here with blue line. And I'll try to get something a little bit more like the Vampire D character proportions. The generic distortions of the long legs and the narrowly contrasted thighs and hips. Maybe it'll extend the thigh out a little. Like that. Push that thigh down further. I forgot that I can do this. You can rotate canvas. I gotta really use that a little bit more, I think. Oops. So assuming YouTube doesn't um, require me to remove the game soundtrack stuff I'm playing back here. I'm going to find out <laughs> the hard way, but I'm playing it at a low enough volume that I think I can strip out the, um, uh, the audio. still have my voice. I'm going to put on some action poses real quick to kind of give me some ideas of how to handle this. I'm going through my image library right now. I can start by doing that. Thinning up the angle a bit there. Go over here, erase some of this.
Oh, I'm really big again, I think. Shrink that. For me, I have to draw it with basic shapes. Yeah, you should. I mean, getting the detail comes is the it's almost the easy part. The hard part is actually what we're doing here, getting the pose right and the proportions kind of in the ballpark. So you can really slow you can slow down later to get the detail in if this is working. Stop. So this is our last pose for this before the five minute break. Just got another minute on this pose. Holding steady at about 22 viewers right now. Hopefully, all of you will be able to stay for the whole session. You're welcome to use your own characters or treat this like a regular figure model session. You ideally should go be back and forth between drawing the character model whenever you see an opportunity to, because like the characters that I'm doing right now are really very advanced in terms of character design uh, so it's not something that's easy to take on so I'm what I'm doing to strategize about how to do that I'm looking for where there's opportunities for me to kind of distort the figure after I get like the basic forms of the fi of like the figure down a little bit in a quick sketch sometimes I can just go straight for it but here I'm gonna pause on this we'll do another set of fives I think we have about we have about one hour left of practice here, and the time has fly, flown by really quickly. We might go a little over time, actually. So it might be actually three more sessions. Um, and if and if we do, we'll be uh, we'll be just like immediately carrying over to the next class that's going to take place here. Uh, so I hope that you guys will be able to. Give a nice starter audience to the guy that's coming after me. I think this is the most successful study so far because this one is pretty close to the um, Vampire Hunter D character model stuff. So I'm going to draw over him a bit more to kind of work out the pose some. I'm just going to turn him into a generic character puppet using the Vampire Hunter D proportions, basically. So what I probably, what I probably want to do is like now that I have like this guy like this, I have my own character model that I could potentially use or just develop further for some of these. So I might actually like get an image of this guy to hold alongside me when I'm drawing in addition to the other reference I have to remind me what I'm kind of trying to shoot for.
Yeah, we got another, basically another hour or an hour and a half. Because remember I did that intro, we weren't drawing during the intro um, for, for like about a half hour. So we technically are, we technically are about at the halfway point, you almost want to say, in terms of like the drawing that we should be getting in tonight. I'm probably just going to have us draw straight up until when that guy's class starts. And then I can just roll straight into that, right in, straight into his class. I might give my hand a break while I let him, while I watch him lecture, and then I'll, I'll jump back into drawing if he's doing any drawing. Um, if he's doing any draw draw along type stuff, let me actually look up the info on the course on the class that he's teaching real quick. So I remember it, it seemed really good and interesting, but. Kind of forgot what it was. Let's see. Classroom announcements. Primitive painting class. We've got dissecting spheres from start to finish. Going over some of your homework from last week. It's be, being taught by James, who's a concept artist. Really good concept artist. From uh, from our Discord. Here he is. Right here. I'll put him on the screen. Let me let me um, turn off the the gesture drawing app. I think it's been about two minutes. Okay, Google set how much time left on timer? I don't think I set a timer. All oh. right, how much time left on timer? Candle ticket for how long? Okay, Google stop. No problem. Nothing's been set. Okay, Google set timer for three minutes. Three minutes, and that's starting now. So anyway, there's the uh, stuff about his class here, right there. Zoom that in a bit. Dissecting spheres from start to finish and stuff. I think this is, yeah, this is his. This is his YouTube right here. That sucks. It only goes up to 720p. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah, this is his. Uh, this is, I think, a recording of last week's demonstration or something that he did. Uh, and then he gave homework. Showing how to paint and handle primitive shapes. Uh, I'm not a painter. I'm an animator. But this kind of stuff might be good for me to do as like cross training for paying attention to planes. Because in the future, I'm going to be using planes uh, that I planes and shading as a uh, understanding understanding planes uh, tool, basically. Pause that. But yeah, so we got the gesture drawing up again. You're not being graded on the homework, but I mean, if you wanted critique from him, that is a problem, unfortunately. But it's not like you can't show up and ask questions and learn by observation from what people are doing. Yes, learn all the things. Okay, Google, how much time left on timer? T minus 17 seconds. Pretty. It's hydrating a little. Okay, Google, stop. It's 
let's change the drawing folder actually that we're using. Let's see here. Let's try to remember what's in this folder real quick. That was good stuff in here, so we'll use that. Uh, I think we'll make this sevens. So then we can really slow down and pay attention to these. Okay, Google, set timer for 25 minutes. 25 minutes, and that's starting now. That's a good pose. This is a video I'm going to try to remember to recommend for people, but it was a video, video on Blender. It was like a um, lecture that somebody gave on uh, affected habits of, uh, of artists. And he went over a bunch of stuff about like um, setting aside work time for yourself is very important. And that's kind of what I'm doing with these classes. And I eventually want to do that for my personal work too. Right now these classes and workshops that I teach are like training my discipline to be able to partition my time And I want to eventually get to the point where I can partition my productive time to work on um, animation and characters and stuff. So again, I'm going to be distorting the character proportions to be more like a Vampire Hunter D character model. It means emphasizing the shoulders keeping in mind that collarbone thing that's going on there and the neck muscles. Um, giving the legs a little bit more length and fashion model distortion. Oh, we dropped below 20 viewers. Oh no. Keep holding on, folks. Hold on to your art stamina. Gotta clock in them hours, folks. Not, I shouldn't be too concerned with viewership, but I do want to improve the quality of my classes in the future to hold more people here. Today, like on short notice, I changed the classroom schedule, so 
I think a lot of people who were going to show up weren't able to. That's just how things are for right now. Uh, I probably, in the future, I'm going to hold a lot more workshops that kind of preview a little bit of what I'm going to be doing in the class so that people at earlier hours can participate. So I'd love to get like uh, six hours of practice like this in a day. I'm actually going to be trying to do that, something like that a little bit after this. With the uh, follow-up class that's coming after this. Alright, so I'm going to use what I remember about the Vampire Hunter D face. Oh, hang on. I'm actually going to beef this one up in size so I can work on detail of the face a little bit more. I'm changing the posture of the head a little bit. Because I kind of want the character's head turning more over to the side so I can see some more of the side plane for this. Too bad. Uh, we're not going to use this one. Let's pick a different pose here. I'm going to have to kind of like eyeball what would be a good pose for a seven for this. This one. We're gonna get at least three seven minute poses. I gave us a little buffer time on the timer for this sesh. So it's gonna come out to around 21 minutes of drawing. Let's see how I can handle this with like simple shapes. Because I've drawn this guy before. I kinda know how he works. So let's see what happens when I try getting some like simplified shapes of like a Vampire Hunter D character model proportions on him. So this runner reminds me, he didn't work on the short that I'm thinking of, but uh, the world record short from the Animatrix, but he worked on, he did, he directed one of the, um, the, Vampire, the Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust uh, director also directed one of the shorts for um, the Animatrix. 
There's a few east, eastern western crossover production stuff he did. In around in the 2000s. Including that. I love the end of Matrix because it kind of like pulls from the energy that was that well, like the energy and the mystery that made the first film good. That kind of got like the the balance of that kind of got messed up in the sequels a bit. Like it feels like they didn't quite know where to go with with it after that point. But I really liked Sense8. Sense8 to me is kind of like an evolution of the uh, of some of the ideas in the Matrix. It's the closest thing to what I would want in like a Matrix sequel. You have a world with these you have a world with these rules and particular ways that these characters interact with it and the ways that they have special powers that grant them um, the ability to do things that that they wouldn't be able to normally in the in the rules of the world. Kind of similar to when people wake up in the Matrix and then uh, re-inject themselves and they get a bunch, they are able to use a bunch of special abilities in the Matrix world. Sense8 kind of has that going on for being able to exchange information and skills across different bodies. Information, skills, and memories across different bodies across space. And uh, it's a brilliant idea of like, make, you have an ensemble cast of like an A-team kind of uh, group of heroes from very different walks of life who are all combined and basically combined across different uh, they're always present together in the same room uh, no matter which, which of them you see basically which is really cool yeah Sensei is really awesome um, that kind of stuff shows me that like uh, when, when the when the Wachowskis have time to really bake an idea. Um, they can be they execute it really well. Still, it's like I felt like the, the the Matrix sequels felt like they felt like the ideas were rushed and kind of haphazard compared to the first one. You know. Feels like the germ of what could have been better. Like if it was paced and thought out better, like I think the germs of some of the ideas in them could have been way better in, this, in the Matrix sequels. Yeah, this is uh, pretty in the ballpark of a plausible Vampire Energy character puppet proportions. And I was able to use simpler lines on it. I can just modify it more bit by bit to make it more like a Vampire Hunter D character. But I think we should try to focus on really clear poses like this that show most of the full body and then aren't too confused for the rest of the session because I think that will give us the most value out of these longer poses. I might make an exception for it if there's like a challenging pose that I think would be worthwhile to tackle. But sometimes like you really need 
to learn something, you really need clarity. See, I kind of got confused here, but... Like, this guy would not be a good one to do. See if we can find another clear pose. That's pretty clear. It's a unusual pose, but it's clear. So we'll use this. I think the biggest problem with the Matrix is it's got too subsumed in its own lore. Like the elemental themes that were going on that made the first one good. The elemental themes and the, myth, the sense of mystery. Like the, the curtain get, gets peeled back in the, in the film about what happened to the world and everything like that. But there's still, even, even at the very end, there's still a sense of mystery going on. And that kind of gets eroded, in the heavily eroded in the sequels, sadly. The Animatrix actually does a great job of like keeping, like giving more, fleshing out the backstory but keeping the mystery. So I think the directors that, the anime directors that they had handle those stories did an amazing job. Because they were kind of vibing from what made the first movie so good. This is a side character in um, that appears in I think the in the third Matrix. It might appear in the second one too. But there's a character in one of the shorts that like the short was fantastic. But that short, what happened in that short should have happened in the main film. The uh, the skateboard uh, kid part where a kid is escaping from escaping from agents that are coming after him when he's in school. That should have been in the film. That, that there's, like the, the Matrix sequels could have like focused on him. He could have been like like the, they could, they could have been, like a reversal thing like a okay Neo Neo's got superpowers and stuff, and he's mentoring this this kid character. Now where they're going into the Matrix, uh, Matrix dives and stuff together. That would have been great. And unfortunately, like this character that has some compelling things to him that you can definitely see more of in the um, in the short that I'm talking about, because um, they uh, like because um, unlike Neo, he's a character that actually had like uh, like a, in a family in the world and stuff too, so. I would have liked to seen stuff of like the um, kind of um, dealing with the fact that his family's still in the Matrix and, and things like that.
I don't think I got the stance wide enough. How much time do I have? Two minutes. Oof. Oh well. Let's go back over and do some torso stuff. Torso and head stuff. I'm trying to think of other stuff that oh uh in the same year that um Dark, that Matrix came out, there's a movie that often gets compared to it that has some thematic things in it that are very similar. Um, uh, Dark City by Alex Proyas. It was just by coincidence that the two films happened to have a lot of similar aspects to them. But Dark City I strongly recommend, and I actually like a little bit better than The Matrix. Because it dips even more into kind of art film territory than uh, than the Matrix does, and Phil K. Dick territory even more than the Matrix does, with like identity and memory and, and stuff. Dark City is very fantastic. De definitely recommend must viewing. I'm almost tempted to play the trailer on here. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna move on from this drawing, which was a successful study, actually. And I'm going to pick another seven minute one. This will be our last seven minute before we take a break for about five minutes, and then we'll do another round. Gonna find a pose that's gonna sustain it, a very clear pose that is gonna sustain us for a good seven minutes. That's a good one, I'd say. Yeah. Let's go for it. So the thing that's cool about mystery. Uh, mystery in writing where think not everything is spelled out and completely explained where you're not hit over the head with lore uh, where symbolism isn't beating isn't beating you over the head and where there's a lot of stuff that seems almost kind of elemental and dreamlike like mystery in your store in those in stories is so powerful the reason why it's so powerful is what the uh, is because it invites audience participation in kind of filling in the gaps creatively of what's happening And you can hint at bigger ideas that you that might be bubbling around in your work. But stories the stories might be hinting at bigger ideas that might be bubbling around uh, without explicitly spelling them out.
Yeah, explicitly spelling stuff out can often... It's like, it's it's kind of like there's a kind of comedy version of that. Like, when you explain the joke, the joke is no longer funny. When, um... When you over-explain the mystery... Okay, Google, stop. When you over-explain the mystery... It, uh... The mystery loses its power over the audience. Actually, I think... Well, you can keep drawing this pose. I, I kind of started this. I think this is going into overtime right now. So I think I'm going to stop here at this one. Eh, no. I'll keep drawing this one. Let's go into overtime on this one. Why not? Got four minutes on it. I'll just set the break timer for... Okay, Google, set timer for nine minutes. Okay, nine minutes. Starting now. And that will be our break timer um, after this pose changes in the next four minutes. So I was getting a good result out of drawing this guy, so I'm just going to keep going with it, if you guys don't mind. But we'll have a five minute break after it. And we'll do one more set, at least one more set. This is what set is this? This should be set number either four or five, right now that we're doing. I think this is set five. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is set set number five that we're on right now. So we're going to do one more set and it will be leading up to into the class that's going to be taking place. And I'll try to coordinate something with the class, the person that's running the class so we can either record it or whatever. I don't know if they're going to be hosting it through their Twitch or whatever, but... Okay, so I got this figure. And now I'm going to go over again and push the figure to be a little bit more like a Vampire Hunter D character. Look at what is happening to his screen right arm on the shoulder there. It's a very interesting distortion of the uh, muscle there. The deltoid does some really weird ass things. It's one of the harder muscles in the body to, to learn. So just because it does so much. changes shape so much. Alright, so should definitely like and lengthen the thigh out for sure. Size. the contrast between the upper torso and the midsection and the hips on this a little bit more to make it more like a D character. But that's starting to get a little bit in there in the ballpark. Pause it on that guy. 
and uh, we're on break for five minutes. Then we'll do one more set before the class. It's coming up after mine. So we had a bit of a lower turnout today because I had to. Um, I had to reschedule for a later time. That's okay. The very dedicated people that showed up here are getting some good mileage in. Be interested in seeing what characters you're drawing for this session too. If you uh, have posted anything in chat so far. I think I see some OCs in there. Some attempts at drawing some of the D characters. Yeah, um... Whatever characters you got that you've been uh, doing for this session, post them. Or if you're just even just doing regular figure drawing. It's totally fine too. Yeah, this is a, like, just in terms of, like, my progress in general, I'm doing all this, like, fundamentals, 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 instead of, like, the funner stuff of character design and so on, because uh, I feel that at where I'm at right now, that's where I'm going to get the most value of using my time. Because so I was trying to do a lot of character design and animation stuff, but I was just not feeling confident about it, because I could feel, like, my figure drawing wasn't doing what I wanted it to do. I didn't have the understanding to like do this like do the designs I want to do, do the designs I want to do, work out the drawing problems in them. Um, that and also like my animation. Similar issue. So that's why I'm doing a lot of this. And I hope that you guys are gonna follow along with me. Because what I'm what I'm planning on doing is keep going with this, keep building momentum on this. And uh segue into utilizing it for animation. The end goal is stuff like up here, what's up here on screen that I just hit play button on, on the left side of the, uh, in the Sakurakuburo thing. That's the end goal right there. But I need to uh, digest quite a bit of figure drawing to get it into, to get the stuff intuitive, so I can like bust it out for uh, figure uh, for like um, figurative animation when I need it. Uh, I think I'm starting to get to the point where I'm about ready to just, like use this stuff in animation. Uh, so I'm going to be trying to do some experiments like that this week. Like I'm thinking like as I kind of like work up my pacing of my stamina for doing at least like one three hour workshop a day in figure stuff, which is being which is like a huge help for me right now. Um, I want to see if I can also start doing that with animation. Because like it's not terribly um, impossible for me to like schedule about six hours of drawing the, the day. Like three hours of them can be a class like this. Three hours of it can be working on animation stuff, utilizing this stuff. One possible way to do it would be uh, I do a workshop earlier in the day where I don't. I'm not really as concerned with having to prep for it. I could do that on like on the off days that I don't have classes that I'm teaching, and then after that, I immediately I immediately start using it for using what I like had warmed up in for three hours to animate. I 
or to work on a character design or something. But look at that, like my finger invention is improving. Um, I've still got a, way, a long ways to go, but I do see the general intuitive ability to construct stuff starting to click a little bit more. Okay, Google, stop. All right, so this last set, session will be another set of sevens, I think. So we're going to pull from this. Done that guy before. We need some really clear figures, though. I think we're ready for something like this. So we'll do this. Okay, well, okay, Google set timer for 25 minutes. 25 minutes, and that's starting now. Well, I'm glad that, pe that the people who are sticking around are hungry, hungry for practice. Um, I hope you stick around for, or I hope you're able to stick around. Like, I, I, if you are at weird hours and you need, to, you really need to get to sleep, uh, do that. But, um, but if you're able to stick around for the class that's immediately after mine, it looks like there's some good shit he's gonna, that James is gonna go over. Did you add a music? You want me to turn on music? Okay. Let me see what I can put on. And the goal with all this figure drawing is to make figure drawing become as natural as breathing so that I can use it for the poses I want to use. Uh, because I have a fairly good understanding of motion, um, but I don't have a good understanding of figure drawing yet. I'm working on that. So I want to make my figure drawing as intuitive and well and like get it much better executed. So I can do animate the stuff I want to animate and have it be well drawn. That's why I'm grinding this stuff. This, there is a purpose to all this. Like I'm seeing a very visible difference uh, in how I draw and how in my drawing from like just three months ago to now, looking back at my other stuff. So I want to keep going with this. I want to get I want to get like this stuff really serious, really like super internalized and practice good habits with keeping it up and building on it. So even, so like even when I kind of like cut into my figure drawing practice time in order to do work on animation stuff, it's not gonna hurt me. Drawing this guy without the Vampire Hunter D reference on screen 
but now I have it on screen again, so I'm gonna go back through and see what I can do to push it up a bit. Collarbone be about somewhere there. That's actually uh, that's actually a pretty good pose for a seven minute. I think the um, the one that's on screen right now for a good torso study from the rear. So as long as you can kind of like blunk out the um, complicated stuff that's happening with the cyberpunk uh, cosplayer design. Is that a painting? That's a painting. So I got a bunch of co cyberpunk cosplayers in there. Yeah, so this is basically going to be a painting figure study right here. But I'm going to use it with the Vampire Hunter D cast, uh, cast designs.
if I can get some good shots of female cast members of Vampire Hunter D to maybe use as my point of reference here. Okay, I got a couple here. It's kind of reversal going on here. Using the red instead of the blue as my draw over line. That's okay. I usually use a darker line like the blue or something for the draw over. It's not really any special reason. But animators tend to use like red and blue pencils, so that's also why I kind of do that. It's common in animation to color code your different drawings of if whether they're keys or in betweens or breakdown drawings. So that when you um, put them on a light table, you can tell which is which. So the thing about the female characters in Vampire Hunter D, like a lot of the action-oriented proportions of the characters, they are exaggerated in a way that like, it remains feminine, but it kind of looks like they would be able to fight and move in the ways that they do. They're very, very ninja-like in their proportions and, and stuff. I'm trying to push a little bit of that right now. But it's a recurring th theme in other characters that the director has, uh, other female characters that the director has made. Like they, they look like that they would be able to move very quickly and like overcome enemies in a fight. And do it with a measure of strength too. Like there's a sense, even it's like feminine and thin. It's like sol soli there's like a sense of sol solidity and dynamicism to them. I'm trying to inject a little bit of that into that. Oh, I can try again on this one. Uh, actually, would that be our last pose? 
just did that. Just did that. So we can do this pose and then do an overtime pose. I think that'd be good. Let's be another torso study. Really try to transform this gal into a portionate design that's a little bit like the Vampire Hunter B cast. She does practically look like she would fit in with them. Uh, as a cast member, though. So that kind of helps. The character design in the um, anime is like limbs that would like seem, if they were drawn too re too realistically, would seem like too fe feminine and frail to feminine and frail to do to like um to like affect much da like uh, much damage on bad guys or whatever. Like uh, they get to they get drawn like um. They get lengthened. They get they get like the sense of solidity to them that doesn't that isn't quite what what it would be like in the real world. So you get like these larger than life, um, dynamic athlete, athletic uh, fighting characters in anime productions like that. Lower opacity on that. See what I can do. Let's see if I can get a good face shot of a female character from this. There we go. So we'll do one more overtime pose, one more seven minute pose after this. It's a really good one to end on. Let's see, is there anything that I can probably address? Your head might be a little small.
Fixes real quick. So I get kind of caught up in detail on this in this pose. really good pose for the last pose. That one was pretty challenging because I was trying to do a, maybe a little bit too much at once, but we're not going to use this pose. We're going to use a uh, different pose for our last one. So make sure it's a really good clear pose. Maybe I should grab one from the previous one of the previous folders. This one, which I know has a lot of clear poses. So it'll be one. Let's make it a 10. Let's just pick a really, really good clear pose to use. This one's a good one. That one's a really good one. This one. Deliberately, uh, deliberately trying not to go overly detailed in this one like I did with the last one. Last one I got a little bit too caught up in a lot of stuff. Anytime you get caught up in detail, when you don't really quite understand what you're trying to draw, it can kind of get overly messy. But it's still worth it to try sometimes and struggle. 
So as long as you can reel it back in with simplicity again. Okay, Google, cool. stop. This is an overtime pose, so we're gonna keep we're gonna keep drawing it for the remainder of time we have left, and then it'll be a break before uh, the 9 p.m. class being taught by James. going for something that's a little bit closer to the costuming of the model sheets on D. I want to get at least one of these in my belt this session. So the model sheet I have shows what he looks like with his cape off, so his cloak off. So I'm going to remove that actually, he doesn't have his collar when his cloak is off. about three minutes on this pose. I definitely want to return to drawing D again, oh, like Vampire Hunter D characters again. So I'm from observation from doing this once here, um, I picked up a lot of stuff 
And I want to see what I can do with it, maybe tomorrow. So I'll be doing some more of this myself in tomorrow's um, tomorrow's timed post session class. In addition to warming up for the Riley Method heads, I'm going to be doing tomorrow. definitely practice drawing his sword when I get the chance. It's just this long curved kind of moon scythe shaped tapered blade. Very very ridiculously long with kind of like this upwards downwards thing at the end of it. It's a really long fucking blade. So I can use that as a prop tomorrow. Yeah, this is starting to look a little bit more like the characters now. Probably not a pose D would take himself, but... The name of the game here is adapting to the poses that we got. I got 41 seconds. I'm gonna maybe draw on what I think his cloak would probably be doing if he was wearing it here. Maybe a little bit. This clip gets like really exaggerated sometimes. are done. Uh, now it's going to be the next class coming up. But yeah, Vampire Hunter D is a, Vampire Hunter D's characters are very difficult. And so it's going to take me more than one shot to really kind of internalize all I want to internalize from them. And I'm going to be working on that some more tomorrow, but this was a really good practice session. For sure. I got a lot out of it, and I hope you did too. We'll be ending the stream right now. Um, I'll just roll it to a congratulations stream, because why not? Uh, if the stream goes back live again, uh, it'll be because I might be re- I might be like, um, like restreaming. I might be restreaming some of the stuff that um, James is uh, James is doing for his class, but that's only if he needs me to. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But anyway, thank you for coming, everyone who stuck around to the end. Congratulations. Stick around in the Discord or join the Discord if you're not um, or a member uh, for James's class coming up next, talking about primitive shapes, which will be really essential building blocks for fit figure drawing.